Okay, we're going to call the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order for our monthly meeting in August. Uh, I would ask that anyone in the room that has an electronic device, telephone, or whatever, please shut it off or put it on silence. I'm going to read a letter from the governor relative to the type of operation that we have tonight with uh, the attendance here in the room. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Order Chapter 30A and 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the, the August meeting, public meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals will be open to the public. However, the public and all applicants are encouraged to participate remotely. Our board members tonight are member Steve Bernard, alternate Doris Smith, who is filling in for Chief Michael Williams, member Craig Pina, member Steve Lianus, myself, Chair Kenneth Gallagher. The zoning enforcement officer is Mr. James Wolf, clerk of the board and also the building inspector. Our recording secretary is Beth Lacombe, and we will have one alternate member tonight that will sit in on one case, and that will be Bob Pelagi. We have one case tonight that has been withdrawn prior to the start of the meeting, and this case will not be heard tonight. There is no date in the future for this case, so it will be re-advertised. And that is petition number 2050, the petition of Ross Messina, I.J. Messina Incorporated, 127 Liberty Street, Brockton, Mass, for a variance from section 27-39.9 and 2748 to construct and operate a small business unit complex in a C7 zone located at 166 East Ashland Street. So that case will not be heard tonight. If you're here for that case, it will not be heard. The way the meeting will run is I will call a petition. Uh, the petitioner or the presenter will come to the podium up front and present the case to the board. After the presentation, After the presentation has been made, I will open it up for the board for any questions that they may have concerning the uh, facts that have been given to us by the petitioner. Following, Following that, that, I will then open it up for public right. discussion I will ask for anyone that wants to speak in favor of the petition, and I will close that, open it for anyone that wants to speak in opposition. I will close that, and then I will open it up for deliberations by the board. At that point, the board will actually deliberate, a motion will be made, and a vote will be taken. That will be done after each case. For the five-member board, in order for a case to pass, we need four affirmative votes. So a vote of five to nothing, the petition will pass. A four to one vote, it will pass. A three to two vote, it will not pass. For the Board, we had discussed tonight of elected chief. I'm going to delay that until our next meeting so the regular board is here to vote on that. So we will not be voting on that tonight. So all of the visitors that are in the hall here tonight uh we would appreciate if you would continue to wear your mask while you're sitting in the chambers and for anyone that's going to come forward to make a presentation we will allow you to remove your mask to make the presentation but we ask you to restore the mask uh, as soon as you've finished your presentation is there anyone here tonight that wishes to withdraw prior to the start of the meeting. 
Seeing none. All right, I think I hit everything I need to hit. The first case before us tonight is number 20-48, the petition of Elizabeth Kelleher, 107 Guild Road, Brockton, Mass, for a variance from section 27-9 to construct a new home on a newly subdivided lot, seeking relief from side setbacks and frontage in an R1C zone located at 111 Guild Road. Please give your name to the clerk. Elizabeth Kelleher. Okay, whenever you're ready. Good evening. Pardon me? Is that okay? That, is that okay? No, we're just deliberating whether we should put that behind the camera so those at home can see it. Yes. Why don't we try that? This okay, will be great. our first right. test case tonight. The board okay with that? Okay. Good. Um, okay, so along with several neighbors here in favor of the project, a variance was granted unanimously by the zoning board in June of 2018. Unfortunately, as construction. Please step forward, come closer. The podium is, I'm sorry, the podium you is here. Sound? <laughs> okay, hold on just a second. We're going to do another test run. <laughs> We're going to get that a little closer. Move this a little closer here. I'm playing with sound up, but that might echo a little bit louder. Give us a test one to five. Give us a test one to five. Not good. No good. We lost it. Okay, now we got it. Yep. Along with several neighbors, here in favor of the project, the parents was granted to be by the zoning board in 2018. Unfortunately, as we be pushed back, the expiration experience was overset on my part. And we have successfully subdivided the property, which is right here. Received our deed and our update on Now fully funded. We are seeking the same from the zoning ordinance 29-7 for the 11 foot and the 50 feet. Also, please note Definitive subdivision, which is still currently active. Due to the side step, we have put in place the abutting property at 106. I also include the construction from a subdivision around the corner at 45. Also, originally, our residential zone which was successfully subdivided and then subsequently two identical homes. I plan to construct a more style home. Um, however, ours will have more and hopefully more articulate landscape in the front. We plan to begin construction in the Our hardship is that the pandemic hit, our contractor was unable to obtain permits to begin construction. I also have a letter from a neighbor who wrote in support of the entire project. I couldn't be here today. I need a letter. I have it. And thank you for your time. If you have any questions. Questions from the board? Uh, Jim, this is Dree Smith. I have an echo on my end. Terrible. Yeah, mine is too. I do hear it, but I, it's coming in like it's repeating halfway through each word. I 
just wanted to notify the board. Therese, can you hear me? I can hear you, and there is no echo. I have the okay. Same this this uh, petition was before us some time ago, and it was approved. And as you heard the petition of tonight, uh, it got delayed, so the time frame ran out. So that's why they're back to us again with pretty much the exact same plan that they had previously, that was previously approved. So I have a question of the petitioner. Is this the same dwelling that we approved the last time you were here? Yes. And there's a maximum of three bedrooms. Yes. And there's been an agreement with the petitioner of the, uh, the butter, I should say, for access on one side of the property. Yes. Is that is that new? Was that with the last one? I don't remember that being with the last one. I did not present. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. You. I did not Okay, so that that's new. Okay. Uh, and the other thing that I would want to bring to your attention is that if this was approved, that the driveway would have to go in the position that you show on this plan, and the green space as shown in the plan would have to remain. In other words, you cannot blacktop the whole front driveway for parking. Okay, so the same hardship you had before is what you have on this one. Okay. All What's all set? Okay, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Please come forward and give your name to the clerk. It's Joseph Doherty, where the neighbors, my wife and I, own the house adjacent to where um, Elizabeth wants to build. We've been in support of the plan the whole time, so we just want to be here to support her again. Number 115? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak in favor? Council. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow members of, uh, members of the board, uh, Jeff Thompson, Ward 5 City Councilor. I was on this board uh, last time Ms. Kelleher presented uh, her petition. I remember uh, all of us at that time uh, 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 commending uh, Ms. Kelleher on the professionalism of her presentation. And so uh, at that time we did approve her petition. Um, uh, as she stated before, uh, the reason uh, she was unable to uh, begin this project was because of the onset of COVID uh, that delayed uh, her getting uh, basically shovels in the ground here. And so uh, at, at that time, it was a good petition uh, supported by the neighbors, uh, a good plan that's going to build a house that is not too big for the lot. I, uh, rec I highly um, recommend uh, a, favorable, uh, a favorable recommendation uh, for this petition and uh, I look forward to this house being added to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here wants to speak in favor? Close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? I can do that every time. Oh boy. All right. I close that portion of that anyone wanting to speak in favor. Is there anyone now that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Are there any other public officials that want to speak on the issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to open it up now for deliberations from the board. The last time we granted this, there were two stipulations. One was that the driveway is to be placed as shown on the plan and the green space shown on the plan will not be reduced.
Yes. If I remember, I remember this uh, very clearly. I was actually driving by the property uh, today. Uh, I remember seeing this at a number of at a number of meetings between planning and zoning, and uh, I was I was wondering what what had happened, and you gave gave a good explanation. And uh, I, I I was in favor of this before, especially because of all the support you had from the neighbors. I'll I'll be I'll be in support of this again. Any other member? We all set. So many more. Want to make a motion? Motion to grant. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mr. Lance. Yes. Mr. Pina. Yes. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman Gilly. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chair, that's a five to zero in favor. Okay, the vote is five in affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you. Next, next month, if we do it fully on Zoom, some of these people, some of the members can stay home. As long as we have a couple of us here, that would cut down on all these echoes. Echo is terrible. Yeah. yeah. Because we have so many of them close to each other. Did you wipe down the. She did. She did. Okay. Could you do me a favor and just close that door? So we don't get a lot of echo. You can leave it just a jar. That's great. Thank you. The next petition is 20-49, a petition of Michael Keith, chair of A American Investment, 539A Salt Street, East Rainham Mass, or Rainham Mass, for a variance in section 279 to construct a 28 by 44 ranch that was previously granted but had expired in an I1C zone located at 20 Charlotte Street. Please identify yourself. You got to speak up. So I'm here before you on a variance that was granted in uh, 2000, November of 2017, I believe. And uh, we had two years to perform. We did split up the property and it's been sold. Um, and I had some medical issues in 18, which took a year and a half to resolve. And this kind of went on the back burner. Uh, so what I'm looking for now is to be able to move forward with this project with no, no changes. This is a variance that you're requesting again. Can you tell us what the hardship is in this property? Me? What was that? I actually had representation that did this before for me, so I'm just standing up. So I really didn't know what he hit. Oh, and it was hardship with the. Uh, I don't understand it. That's right here. I can't read it. <laughs> 
So the, so the hardship, hardship that you're looking for tonight is basically the same hardship that was yeah, presented no the last time? Yes. Okay. And yeah. we have that on record, but nothing has changed on that then. Correct. All right. The one thing that has changed is the street. Can you tell us what's going on with the street? I'm going to put a 24 foot uh, roadway with uh, two 12 inch Cape Cod berms. Um, I'm not going to change anything to do with the water or sewer. Um, and that will be performed also when I go forward with this also. I'm going to go in front of them, uh, I believe Thursday. So you have been before planning and they laid out the- Yes, I've, I've been approved for both planning and zoning, yes. And I had a time limit of, of two years, but it lapsed because of medical issues that I was taking care of. Okay, the last time we granted this. I have to keep remember to hit that button. The last time we granted this, there were some stipulations that were involved relative to water not running onto adjacent properties right, right. and building the street to the standards of the requirements of the city of Rockford. So those will still stand if this is approved tonight. Okay. Any questions from the board? None? We'll close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Nobody on the line? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Right over here. Hi, my name is for the past ten and a half years. Yes, uh, but the the vacant lot uh, that we're talking about. Um, actually, it was a surprise to me that this had been before planning. Um, it was my understanding that I would have been notified and had an opportunity to speak. Um, I think it would be a surprise to my other neighbors as well. Um, I never got notification of that. Um, so that's a surprise to me. Um, so my concern, um, what I would like for people to take into consideration is similar to what um, had been discussed here before. Um, and that is the, the capacity of Charlotte Street. Um, for those who have seen Charlotte Street, it is a dirt road um, on a hill. Um, I think the widest right now, maybe around 10 feet. Um, we currently, you know, sort of know each other well on that street. There are times that I have to back out of the road to let somebody else in. Um, overflow parking happens on Pinehurst Street, um, which we also share with you know, neighbors and two new um, housing houses that were built there within the past two years. So when people have a lot of parties, it becomes very crowded um, around that area. Um, you know, the, the rain runoff has been an issue currently right now, and I understand the plan is to pave that. Um, my concern is um, that when you pave a street like that, you know, you make things faster and there currently is no drainage at the bottom of that street. Um, currently, the neighbors at the bottom of Pinehurst actually shovel dirt from Charlotte to clear um, to clear that area because just the runoff. Um, I'm also concerned about, you know, in building a new house, you know, that house will be above me, you know, so everything not just comes down the street, but also will come onto my property. Um, I already had somebody come up to me. I was outside working one day and asked me if they could put the utility pole on my property. And I'm like, no, <laughs> um, you know, so these are like concerns that I, I have. Um, I don't even know what that would even look like to go 24 feet when, you know, it's my house, then you have a median with trees, then you have a person who owns property on the other side of Pinehurst. I mean, are we talking about removing all the green space to make room for a road? I, I just, you know, so, I, yeah, I'm 
thank you. I was, you know, um, again, shocked to hear that it had gone through planning and nobody, I know nobody around there attended. Like I thought that I would have the opportunity to speak um, about this. Um, so those are, those are my concerns, um, what that would look like. Um, and you just handed me this, I don't know. Somebody can interpret this for me. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is, but um, like I said, I've been there for 10 and a half years. You know, it's a, it's a very unique setting if anybody's been up there, you know, and we love our area, all the neighbors around it. Um, you know, I'm just concerned somebody coming and wiping it out. And then, you know, and the damage from the rain and it just, so that's, um, that's, that's my concern. Those are my concerns. And I know that there were accommodations that were made before. Um, a lot of them had to do with getting the planning approved. And it sounds like they already have. Um, and I don't know what that was going to look like. And I don't know why anybody would be asking me to put a utility pole on my property. I was going to say, you want to show her this plan? Have you seen the plan? I, First okay. time. The city, the street. That's right. Move that side. So this is the Answered all the questions. Um, we need, we need to move on. I'll get to you in a minute. Okay. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? 
Seeing none. Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Whoops, we got one. I was going to say the council. Okay. Seeing none, Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there any public officials that want to speak on this issue? That's, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Thompson, Ward 5, City Councilor. Um, <clears throat> so, as a City Councilor, I, uh, I, I have uh, uh, multiple responsibilities in a, in a case like this. Uh, the city does have an interest in increasing our residency base uh, uh, and also our tax base by uh, building quality housing uh, in Brockton. Um, I've been to the lot. I saw that it fits all of the um, setback requirements, both uh, side, front, and uh, rear setbacks. Uh, this is, I believe, a, uh, a lot that is screaming out for some development. Uh, but I also share um, uh, Holly's concern regarding runoff. Uh, this is a dirt road uh, that will um, that that she's basically at the bottom of. Uh, I I live about a block away, almost two blocks away from this area. I travel down Pinehurst Street often uh, during heavy storms. Uh, Holly is right that there's a uh, um, a, a bunch of dirt that is uh, that is laid at the bottom of uh, at Pinehurst at the bottom of Charlotte. Looking at the plan, I see there is some plan to address uh, runoff, um, to uh, pave this street, which uh, I believe it, it, it definitely needs, and that there will be some uh, direction of the water away from the residences onto Pinehurst. My, my concern, and this is something I can bring up at the planning board, and, and, and Craig, hopefully you would have some say here, um, what does this water do when it reaches Pinehurst? Uh, we gotta make sure that it is directed um, uh, you know, into a sewer system or, or uh, off the street. Um, I, I don't want to uh, substitute one problem uh, for another. And so um, I'm, I'm, as my capacity as a city councilor, I'm neither for nor against. I just want to make sure that if we do do a, a development in this area, uh, that the uh, neighbors um, and the abutting neighbors' uh, concerns are addressed. And that is water runoff uh, due to the grade of the street and um, you know, and the position of the houses below it. So um, I just want to take, I just want you all to take that in mind uh, when you uh, deliberate and uh, decide. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to open it up for discussion from the board. Uh, Chief, 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 Chief Smith. Chairman? Yes. So I'm looking at the blueprint, and I believe on Charlotte Street there is or are two utility poles designated to be put on that street. Was, was the uh, butter's question answered? My recollection is the last time this came before us. The Edison pole that was placed on the street was placed in the wrong location. It needs to be relocated. Uh, okay. So, so when she mentioned about somebody come to relocate a pole, once this, if it's approved and the street is laid out, that pole will be put in its proper location. Thank you so much. So the last. The last time this came before us, uh, we put several stipulations on this. One was that there was no increase with current runoffs. The roof drainage was underground storage. There was no occupancy without the street being completed. No more than three now at the planning board, there has been an agreement that the street is going to be a 24 foot wide street with Cape Cod Verum on each side. So that should alleviate the problem of all the dirt washing down the street. So those were the stipulations that were placed on it. And uh, it is going to come back before planning again to clean up any of those loose details that we heard about tonight. You can carry that back to the planning board. Any other discussion on the board? Uh, yes. Chair, I, 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 I mean I'm in agreement that uh, a lot of a lot of the issues that uh, the neighbor brought up, and uh, we do listen, and uh, I think a lot of the issues you brought up will be taken care of uh, in the in the course of the project. 
Um, this was this was approved before under the, under the, under some strict st stipulations to to keep an eye towards keep keep keeping keeping in, uh, an an interest keeping your interest in, at heart, uh, making sure that your your yard and your house isn't flooded and uh, that the street is brought up to our standards. Uh, so you won't have to back down the street for someone else to come in, come down the street. Um, with that, with that being said, I'd like to like to make a motion to grant. Second. There is no other discussion. Second. Great. Motion. Correct. Yes. Okay. So the maker of the motion has agreed to put the same stipulations on that was agreed to at the last time that this was granted. So a motion's been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 Everybody's microphone's open. Echoes. Yeah, it's not good tonight. Okay, the next petition is 20-50, which has been withdrawn. The next petition after that is petition 20-51, the petition of Robert R. Pellegrini, Jr., attorney for ARI Strzok and Sheila Strzok, trustee, 63 Main Street, Suite 1, Bridgewater, Mass., for a variance from section 27-9 and 27-36 to convert the vacant building into one unit, three bedroom, one bathroom, 880 square foot residential dwelling unit on a non-conforming lot in an R3 zone located at 4 Track Street. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and the rest of the board. My name is Rob Pellegrini. Um, this is for 4 Track Street. Um, the plan is 66, uh, plot is 17. Not sure how well you can see from there, but uh, this is what the lot looks like on the assessor map. Um, I have with me uh, the owner, Ari Strzok, the trustee of the trust, and Manny Paiva, who prepared most of these plans. Um, Really, um, what what we're trying to do in a nutshell here is get your approval in order to use a vacant building, which has been on the site. The site was constructed about 1900. Um, it's shown here. It's a sort of long rectangular building that goes basically from front to back. This is track over here. This is cost over here. Um, Let's see if we can share some of the photos. Okay, so uh, if you're driving past on the street, you're seeing this is the vacant building here. As I always would, I, I went and um, met with um, the planner and um, uh, Mr. Fluke as well. And um, originally we weren't sure about the property line and whether or not these, these two structures here, they, this is a bulkhead and these are stairs. Um, we weren't sure whether or not those um, encroached on the 
city property, they, they don't. When we had the um, survey done, it's, it's clearly on the property. So this, once again, this building is vacant. Um, there's a property right next to it, which is uh, four units now. It's currently occupied completely for family. And uh, there are four vehicles, you know, contributing to uh, parking on the street here as well. So um, I believe what we needed for relief is from, uh, for the lot size for Article 4, Section 27-9, the lot's currently non-conforming. And obviously with the addition of the unit, um, it would become less conforming. Um, the unit, by the way, the proposed unit is a three bedroom, which is kind of nice. And, um, and also um, to alleviate some of the parking issues, um, we're proposing to reduce, uh, to um, cut off the rear of this currently vacant building which equates 182 square feet and um, that's going to open up this whole yard area so if you look at the parking plan um, we're you know suggesting um, that two vehicles would be able to fit in here so the current situation would be improving as um, you know we're going to assume that the census and what's there currently there being you know an average of, of one car per residential unit you know that staying the same would be pulling another car off the street which is a potential bonus uh, so in addition to 27-9 for minimum lot size there's two more uh, one is for parking that's um, the same article actually and then finally um, it's a conversion, so that's Article 4, Section 2736. Um, once again, and B1 of that article says there shall not be more than the maximum number of dwelling units that are permitted and uh, on the lot. So again, you know, for the same reason as I previously suggested, um, that is not, not conforming. Um, obviously, the shape and topography of the lot with this building, which has been there since 1900, doesn't allow for any other use of that building. Um, and uh, I would view it as a, you know, a actual positive that it would be used and that we could potentially be pulling, you know, at least one, probably two cars off the street parking. Um, and I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, once again, I have Manny Paiva who prepared the plans and the owner as well, who could speak to any questions you have about the property. Thank you, questions from the board. Uh, so th this is, uh, excuse me, am I muted? Mr. Burnett? Yes. Yeah. This is a uh, pretty much a postage stamp size lot. It's been that way since for a hundred years. You are correct, Mr. Peter. There's, there's not a lot of optimal. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
something further. We're all set. What are you going to do for uh, rubbish removal for this site? We were just talking about that, Mr. Chairman. Um, you're right. Uh, one of the pictures even showed that that uh, currently the trash barrels, especially in the photo, are sort of strewn across it. So there's two options. Uh, one could be to where is okay. One could be to um, mine them out here. Here, we get the stuff and. Uh, Okay, yeah, that's actually a pretty pretty good location. So this would be on the southerly property line here, and Manny's kind of drying in where you could leave them. Uh, um, yeah, sure, I can turn it around for you. So uh, the chairman was asking um, where these these could be placed. Is, Actually, in the picture that is lined up here, but there isn't anything here right now. So currently, that's a practical place to put them. So rather than stretching them across the wood here, they would be placed there. Um, would the board like me to show you what I just showed the buyer? Um, I think we saw it. Okay. We saw it. Oh yeah. Um, currently there is building here. Yeah. So uh, uh, that would open up the whole uh, area for um, well no more than the amount of room that are lined up out here on the street. So the, so the current building that's there is four, four units. Okay. How many bedrooms? Are they all twelve? Yeah. Two beds. So we got four units with 12 bedrooms, and now you, the proposal is to do five apartments with 16, there is, 15 there is, there bedrooms. There's currently uh, there a total of eight. So it's two bedroom per unit. Um, so there's, there's eight here now. Um, the new addition um, would add three. So you'd be going from eight to 11. Okay, so bear with me here. Uh, so the building that's there now has four apartments and each one of those apartments has two bedrooms. Correct. The proposal is to convert this building into one additional apartment with three bedrooms. That's the proposal. That's, that's correct. And the proposal is to take part of the building off in the back to make a spot where we can put rubbish and you're telling us that you're going to be able to put two vehicles off of the street on the property. That's correct, sir. That doesn't do anything for the current parking for the current building. No change in that. That is correct. That Other is correct. Other than that, 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 you know, that apartment one car per apartment, then by adding places for two, then that's what I was suggesting earlier, that if this holds true, then we would be making it slightly better. Okay, very good. Oh, God. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other, Any other questions from the board? Is, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? In favor? Okay. Anyone wants to speak in favor? Nobody on the screen? Okay, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Okay, the only thing I would ask, if there are multiple people that want to speak, if you can confine your remarks so that we're not repeating the same thing over and over again, that would be very helpful. Thank you. I'm assuming there's a camera here where you guys can see me better, yes? Yeah? Yes. Joe, <clears throat> so I got just something to read, then I got photos as well. We're all co current residents of Foster Street, and we're writing, you know, in opposition. 
because there's currently not enough parking for the current residents in the neighborhood and current tenants consistently park on the current actual sidewalk, which makes it hard for me to get anywhere. I gotta go on the street. Where are you on the street? I live at number 29. Across the street? Yeah, we're on the opposite side, two houses up. Are you? Uh, trash is constantly overflowing, rodents, raccoons, and skunks. Um, during the winter, especially during the parking bans, all the vehicles are left on the street, and when the plows come down, they all just get plowed in, and then sometimes there's tickets and sometimes there isn't. And then, uh, as he had mentioned earlier about track street, sidewalks are eroding away and the street is just trashed. I mean, Foster Street finally got done after, you know, 50 years of being in disrepair. And using the c -Click Fix website, I've got several issue numbers here of ones that were made about that particular property and then I've got several photos here. I don't know if there's a way for you guys to actually see them. Um, as far as the parking stuff, is there a camera on this thing or does that help? Yeah. Okay, so you saw that one. And then there's this one particular car at the bottom that keeps parking both ways and on the sidewalk up against the building. Um, if you saw on the first one, you can actually see they're actually on the sidewalk in front of the parking meters. They right. just drive on it and park there and leave it there. Several of those have been, you know, ticketed over the course. And then as to the trash issue, I don't know if you guys can see these. Yeah. And then this was this past Wednesday. And then the pictures of track street, just the street the way it is and the sidewalk eroding away and all that. I tried emailing this to the ZBA email and got kicked back, so I had to send it to the building department. I hope they received it. Yes. Okay. We got it. Okay. Wasn't sure if it made it all the way through, so. The three parking spots that he had on his um, photos, actually, parking spot one, two, and three are in the street, and it's actually no parking. There is a sign posted, no parking. And they're trying to say that that's their parking on street. Right, there's actually only one spot there because if you park right on the curb, on the corner, you can't see when you come from Track Street onto Foster because they're parking within 20 feet of the curb. Okay. The no parking sign actually just got replaced. They actually knocked it down. I have a picture of all the cars parked there without the no parking sign, but it was, which was in that email as well. Okay, you're all set? It's been an ongoing yeah. issue. We feel that by adding another apartment, a three bedroom apartment, it's only going to make it more congested, more parking issues with the snow and the trash. So we are definitely against it. So your big issue is just the parking and the trash? Yeah, there's no, there's yes. no place to park for residents, current, current um, occupants of that building. Okay. And the trash is overflowing. Very good. You all set, sir? Yes, sir. Is there anyone else who wants to speak in opposition? May I, uh, may I address some of those comments? No. No, no that part's done. Nope. Is there anyone else who wants to speak in opposition? If not, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to open it up to deliberations from the board. Wait a minute. Hold on just a minute. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Okay. I'll reopen it again for opposition. Go ahead. Give, give us your name and address. Okay. To speak up loudly. You can take the mask off if it's more comfortable to speak. It's up to you. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Anna Cruz. I reside at 38 Foster Street. And um, 
another issue that opposing, there's no stop sign there. So when everybody is trying to get out of Foster uh, Track Street to get onto Foster Street, they can't see beyond the cars. And um, it, a couple of times, I personally have almost gotten in an accident because people are just screeching out of that uh, street because nobody can see beyond the cars that are parked on Foster Street for that um, street, that corner. Also, um, I've uh, witnessed as well that there's never been any shoveling in the sidewalks on that property, be it on Track Street or being on uh, Foster Street. And sometimes that I have to walk because of medical issues. Um, I have to walk in the street, which um, allows me to have the possibility of getting hit by a vehicle. All set? All set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Chair, we're attempting to have Andy unmute himself. I can't hear you. Andy unmute himself. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Andy Morris at 58 Boston Street. Is opposed to it because of the parking and adding the bedrooms and more cars to the street. What's the second? 58 Foster. I still can't get it. 58 Foster. 58. So this issue is parking. This issue is parking, adding the bedrooms and more cars to the street. Okay, so Andy at 58 has issues with parking and the additional bedrooms. Is he all set? Is he all done? Uh, one second, Chair. Not going to be anything else, Chair. So he's done. So he's going to be done. Okay, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I am going to open up for discussion from the board. Board numbers. Uh, Foster, Foster Street, uh, I believe, is uh, in recent years. Uh, have been repaved, uh, improving the the street tremendously, uh, in, increasing the value uh, of of homes up and down uh, that that street. It's become very very attractive from 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 the, a declining uh, situation. However, going from west uh, to east, uh, down to down to uh, Warren Avenue, when you approach uh, track Street, uh, and you uh, reach uh, the location of the building that's uh, in, in, in question, it becomes a, a problem of density, density of people, and a, an overwhelming density of automobiles, uh, taking away from 
the upgrading of, uh, of the street. As you approach uh, that end of the street, you have uh, people coming out of Track Street, coming out of the apartments, uh, apartment buildings across the street, uh, and people uh, ex exiting and entering uh, the, uh, the business uh, at, the, at, the, at the corner. Uh, I have uh, a, a real problem uh, with more people, uh, more cars uh, uh, being added uh, to uh, that end of, of uh, Foster Street. Track Street and Foster Street inter intersection has always remained a problem, in including uh, the, uh, the sidewalk uh, across from this building on Foster Street that is that has always uh, been in a uh, eroding situ situation uh, for, for years. So I'm, I'm not, in, not in favor of adding people or cars uh, to uh, that location. Thank you. Uh, no, my questions have been answered by the abutters. Thank you. Uh, in, in, response in response to this, uh, this, this property, I mean, it's, it's been this way since 1900. It's a 120 year old residential property that, uh, what else is there to do other than, other than ask, a, a, a an owner to keep it vacant and make it, a, make, just make it a drain. Um, I, I, I sympathize very much with the congestion of the neighborhood, the con congestion, the density of the buildings, the people and the, in the, in the vehicles. But um, I don't think it's fair for us to ask a property owner just to, when there's no other use for a building, just to keep it vacant. Okay. Yep. I personally, personally, that the size of this structure is only about 880 feet. We're looking to put a three bedroom unit in there with a kitchen, a bathroom and a living room. Uh, even though we're looking at possibly putting two spaces in the backyard, uh, I don't see how that is going to make anything any better relative to the four units that are currently there. The whole lot is only 3,900 square feet. And for a unit of this size, we need about 12,000 square feet. We had a very similar situation two weeks ago where a separate building was located on the same plot where they tried to put another apartment unit in. And this is pretty much identical to that. Uh, we know the building's been there for a long time, but I don't think this is the best use for that building. Uh, I think the neighbors down there are putting up with a lot of grief with what's going on in the house that's there now relative to parking. I have looked at the site numerous times, both during the daytime and at night, and there is cars parked on the sidewalk. They're parked everywhere down there. I don't see this as an enhancing the neighborhood, uh, and I, I cannot support uh, converting this into another living unit. Uh, what can be done with it, I don't know. Maybe it should be torn down and make parking for the, for the unit building that's there now. But it certainly is not going to enhance the neighborhood by adding another three bedroom unit in an 880 square foot unit. That's all I got to say. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? I make a motion to grant with the hopes that it fails. Was there any stipulations? I don't have any stipulations, but I, but I would accept the Second. stipulations that, have, that make sense from other board members. Okay, we did not put any stipulations on there whatsoever. I, yeah. on, on motion. Motion's been made and seconded to grant. Okay, we put any. We were told that they were going to tear down the back end of the building to make more room in the back of the building. But that's about all that I've heard here. And they agreed to do that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Chief, if, if you can hear me, you're, uh, I'm having problems with your hearing you. you bre you're, you're breaking up, so I didn't, I didn't hear, hear you. The one thing that he did mention in his presentation 
was that they intended to tear the south end of the building down in order to extend the driveway so that they could put two vehicles in the driveway. Other than that, we heard nothing uh, other than that as a stipulation. And he agreed to do that. That answer your question? Mr. Bernard, that answer your uh, question? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, Thank you. All right, there's a motion to made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard. No. Mr. Bernard. No. Mr. Bernard. No. Mr. Bernard. Yes, yes. Mr. Smith. No. 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 Chair, one in favor and four against. Okay, the vote is four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition is denied. The next petition is 20-52, the petition of Senior Living Acquisitions, LLC, 857 Coast Road, Fairfield, Connecticut, for a variance from section 2732, 2748, 2753, and 54, 2710, subsection 2, to be allowed to construct and operate an assisted living facility seeking relief from building height, number of stories, floor to area duration, and parking in a C5 zone located at plot 14 Christie's Drive. Mr. Chairman, with the board's permission, my name is and I'm attorney of law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton, Massachusetts. And I have the pleasure to represent Senior Living Acquisitions, LLC. Mark D. Call is here and he's here with his uh, uh, team uh, that will be hopefully addressing the board and explaining the project, but uh, I'd like to lead it off and suggest that I think this is a good news story for the city of Brockton. Uh, everyone here on the board is familiar with the uh, 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 Christie Way area. It's uh, developed nicely. It's in an economic opportunity zone. Uh, it is, interestingly enough, in a C5 zone, which uh, basically has professional offices, but it has uh, uh, how would you say evolved uh, from other uses, uh, which included uh, a major hotel, uh, which uh, include uh, another assisted living facility uh, and uh, uh, basically a daycare uh, facility area. So what we have in a C5 zone is interestingly enough, a zone that allows hospitals, it allows daycare facilities and it allows uh, nursing homes, but does not allow the same companion use, which is an assisted living facility. Uh, nursing homes, of course, have residential components. So the uh, developer here uh, seeks to be allowed to construct and operate a 116-bed uh, a facility uh, with uh, uh, 55 parking spaces uh, in a vacant lot of land. Uh, it uh, tried to acquire land next door uh, with the uh, Shields family uh, to uh, order to uh, expand the facility, which goes to one of the variances, which is the height variance. Uh, but they were unable to do so. So 
and I and Mr. Chairman, if it's of use to the board, uh, I have the exact same uh, uh, plan that was filed with the board, but it's in color, so it might stand out for the board if the if the uh, you, oh this one is uh, the site plan, Judge, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, but. Uh, if I may, uh, uh, the interesting part of uh, uh, this specific user is that he has a model which he will explain, uh, which goes toward to uh, moderate uh, and, 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 and uh, middle income families uh, in the very high cost of uh, uh, congregate care. Uh, it's an exciting model. Uh, it's one that I think would be uh, uh, great for the city of Brockton because statistics have shown that there is going to be a huge need uh, for these facilities within the next 20 or 30 years nationally. Uh, it's going to be roughly a $15 million project. And it's gonna take a vacant piece of land uh, into a, uh, uh, an exceptional uh, value uh, commercial structure that will bring uh, benefits to the uh, tax uh, based system of the city of Brockton with a commercial use. Uh, and it in fact, uh, it, uh, is 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 going to utilize basically the entire 59,000 square feet of the lot. So basically what we're seeking from this board is relief by way of allowing us to have a variance for the use, uh, which isn't specifically utilized uh, under our zoning bylaw, but is, as I said before, is touched on very closely by companion uses that are in fact allowed in the C5 zone. Uh, secondly, for the board to submit uh, and agree to the the numbered parking, which is roughly a 0.8 per bed uh, for the facility uh, at 55 spaces because our, our, uh, our table of uses for parking does not identify the use uh, necessary. However, when the board makes that consideration, none of the occupants of the uh, assisted living facility in fact drive cars uh, in, in, in this particular model. And lastly, uh, it would be a request for uh, a variance for a roof the number of stories and building height, uh, as well as maximum floor area. And basically, because of the size of this lot, they are not able to do their model program within the constraints of the uh, property as it exists. Uh, that's why they attempted to acquire more land from uh, the Shields family, but were in fact unsuccessful. So it required from a four story to a five story building which led to the uh, variances that are before it. So I would suggest uh, that I'm gonna bring Mark on and I'd, la I'd like the board to consider listening to uh, their e exciting experience. They're very well uh, funded developer uh, and very experienced in the field. Mark. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, uh, commissioners, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mark DePackel from senior, I'm the principal of senior living acquisitions. And what Why, we're, you spell your last name? Sure, D-E capital P is in Peter, E-C-O-L. So what, we're out of Connecticut and what we're doing is expanding these uh, what we call mid-market assisted living and memory care throughout New England. Uh, being in the industry for about eight years, there's a huge, the, the, there's an incredible growing uh, demographic of the elderly because of the baby boomers and their parents. And this is a population that is, will be expanding ex exponentially. Uh, but there's a big need for affordable assisted living. A lot of the luxury affordable uh, assisted living communities are great, but they're very high priced and they only serve the tip of the iceberg. So with, what we've done is modified a very successful programmatic design where it's about 30% less than the uh, luxury assisted living, but it has the same amenities. This is called mid-market and it's basically for the middle class. They're, you're kind of caught in between. It's not subsidized. If you don't have any money at all, you could go to subsidized assisted living that the state provides. If you have a lot of money, you can go to the luxury assisted living, but it's the middle. 
So what happens is these families get stuck where they can't afford it. And typically the, the, the daughter or the, the children try and take care of the parents as best they can, hire some part-time help, whatever. So we've, we're part of solving the problem for assisted living uh, at, a, at a relatively affordable level. It's private pay, it's fully taxable, but it, it's, uh, it runs about 30% less. Um, it's a benefit to the community because obviously it takes care of mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. There's no traffic. There's no impact to the uh, school systems or services of the town. So the town basically receives uh, property taxes uh, without having to spend money in services. Um, the other thing we've done is this, this, uh, this COVID, the pandemic situation, of course, is terrible, but it's allowed us because we're just starting to develop these properties. We just had our first one approved in Bristol, Connecticut, zoning approved in Naugatuck, Connecticut. We've got several in, in various stages of uh, entitlements. But because of the pandemic, we're able to modify our design somewhat to make it pandemic resistant. So what we're doing is we're installing a, an expensive ultraviolet uh, air handler in the building. So all of the air goes through this UV uh, mechanical system and eliminates 99.9% .9 of the viruses and bacteria. Uh, we have negative pressure in the room, so the, the air is sucked out. It doesn't uh, stay stagnant. Um, we have telehealth. So the, uh, the older people don't have to go out and see a doctor, wait in a waiting room, be exposed to the elements. They can see their doctor right in the wellness room, just like, just like here. And a lot of the treatment can be done through, uh, through FaceTime. Uh, we have remote visitation. So there's each room has a smart TV, a large smart TV with a user-friendly FaceTime apparatus. So if you want to visit mom anytime, she presses the button and you're visiting. So that this prevents the, uh, you know, the germ factor of actual visit visitations. My mother's 95 and she uses FaceTime with, with us all the time. So it's, it's really user-friendly and it's very doable. Uh, we've got operating protocols for the, uh, for the service personnel, which can carry in germs and bacteria, where uh, their time cards are actually, they can't uh, uh, check in to their employment if they have a temperature. Uh, ultraviolet mats, rooms where you can actually come and visit, but they have plastic barriers like you have here. So we've really kind of gotten ahead. Uh, we're on the cutting edge. Uh, we're, we're affordable, we're on the cutting edge and we're serving a big need for the, for the entire population. And we're an asset to the community. Uh, on our team, we're very, very experienced. Uh, Jerry Menke is the architect from EGA, has spent 30, 40 years uh, strictly in assisted living uh, design. Uh, Mark Lancor, our engineer, is uh, doing all of our site planning. We have a very coordinated team. Seth Dudley is our chief operating officer and has run communities uh, just like this. Uh, very experienced with uh, uh, almost 20 years of experience in that, uh, in that field. And uh, our contractor is uh, Wilson Construction, bonded to 650 million and has a huge division. That's all they do in the division is senior housing. So we're very well uh, situated. We have a great team and uh, we look forward to working with, with the city of Brockton. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I guess if there are any questions about the design, we have both the architect and the architect and the architect. Any questions? Finish your uh, presentation. I have. Presentation. I, I, I have. Questions from the board. 
Mr. Pina. I have one, one quick question. What I noticed in the design is in the, in the front uh, entryway, there are pillars holding up three stories. Uh, every time you turn around, you see, you're seeing in the news someone's driving into a building. Are there any plans to put bollards around those to offer some kind of protection? <clears throat> Jerry Mankey, EDA Architects. Yes, there are bollards. What you're seeing is concept as opposed, opposed to the finished site. Okay. <clears throat> What is the height of the overhead? What is the height of the overhead in that driveway going in? The height of the driveway going in under the overhead. Approximately 17. It's high enough to get a fire truck through there. Well, you know where I'm going with my question then. And a delivery truck that may come in there. We hear these horror stories about people that are driving into these things. I'm just asking if you've considered that. The height of that for our trucks that will be we have. deliveries in there. Yeah, the fire truck is taller than the delivery truck generally. How many uh, employees do you think there will be on any any one shift? Yeah, I'm thinking you're going to change shifts maybe three times a day. So on any one shift. I guess maybe like the day might be more than the night or whatever. Can you kind of give us an idea? How many? When you have all of your management staff there. Um, but most of the time you're going to have between right around 10. So overnight it would be about 10? Correct. I keep forgetting to hit that mute. So overnight there would be 10? Sorry, 7. Okay, so where I'm looking here is we're probably looking at 32 to 35 employee cars at change of shifts. I probably wouldn't say 32, somewhere between 25 probably. And then the, the interesting thing is where it's located, we may not have folks driving in. Um, some folks may be taking public transportation as well, but I'd say maximum between 20 and 25. Okay, and the ratio that you're talking about is 0.80. So you're figuring that there's going to be less than one vehicle per uh, occupant in the building? Correct. Mostly because most of the occupants that are going to be there won't be driving cars. Correct. So it would appear that most of the parking is going to be needed for the people that work in the building and visitors. And visitors, absolutely. What is your experience with the numbers that you're proposing tonight in other areas? With the 55 parking spaces? Is, is definitely more than adequate. adequate. Um, you know, we often look at around 45 to 50 to be more than adequate, so we're a little bit above that. So your past experience has been that with the number of occupants in the building, that the point eight is an adequate number for employees, visitors, whatever. Absolutely. that we usually ask. I'm going to hit on mute again. On these, on types, these types of occupancies is uh, snow removal. You got any thoughts on what you're going to do with snow removal up here? Looks like pretty much every square inch is pretty much covered here. So we, we'll have a lot of the uh, landscaping agency to help with the snow removal for sure. And then we'll do, we'll do you know, some of it ourselves. Um, but it'll be it'll be pretty regular in a few you know a few times during the storm that somebody's gonna be in there cleaning that up. Well, I guess my question is, where's the snow go? <laughs> yeah. So we'll work with the landscaper if, if we have to haul it out of there. That's what we have to do. If we find an area there that we can you know stack and pile it, we'll do that. Um, you know the ability to have a few more parking spaces. You may have to lose one of those in the winter for some snow um, storage per se. 
maybe you want to add something else to that. Um, in my previous life, I was a heavy construction owner with 300 plowing accounts, commercial plowing accounts. Rest assured, we will have a uh, contractor with a payloader. And typically, if you get a large storm, you, you get a payloader in there, you get a triaxle, you take out the snow, end of story. Well, I think it's worth a discussion because what you're proposing here is to put a, a structure that's going to pretty much take up the whole plot. And we have had experience in the city in the past that when you get a major snowstorm, you can end up losing a quarter or a third of the backing places because they don't want to remove it. They just push it, put pass it back, and suddenly your 50 spaces are suddenly down about 30. So that's why I'm bringing it up. I'd like to make sure we hear that publicly that you're not going to anticipate losing parking places. And if we have a major snowstorm, then you would anticipate removing that snow from the site. Absolutely. Yes. So, uh, uh, so you can provide this uh, wonderful service to the elderly at a thirty at thirty percent less uh, cost than uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, more up, uh, up upscale uh, uh, assisted living facilities, and you call it mid market affordable, affordable, yet you have the same amenities. Uh, fully taxable and in, in, in private pay. Uh, all of this <clears throat> seems is, seems to be very attractive or would be very attractive to uh, to, to families who have el elderly family members that uh, would be willing to uh, uh, to place their 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 relatives or loved ones uh, in this facility. Uh, are you trying to attract uh, people from near and far, or are you trying to service the local community? And, and have you any uh, 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 stipulations uh, as to uh, who you will be uh, servicing? You talk about fulfilling a need in the, in the, in the area, uh, but uh, what stipulations do you have uh, uh, in, your, in your mission? To address. So approximately 70% of the folks, we, we anticipate, and like we've seen in other projects, 70% of the folks that live with us will come from the primary market area, which is about 10 mile radius here from Brockton. Um, we I couldn't quite hear, but what, 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 what is the parameter of the market area? About a 10 mile radius is the primary. 10 mile market. radius, okay, thank you. With, we anticipate the majority of our folks coming from right here in Brockton. Um, in terms of stipulations on who can and cannot reside there, um, as long as folks can meet the, the medical qualifications, you know, and, and generally folks are going to be, our average resident is going to be around 82 um, and have, you know, need assistance with maybe two or three activities of daily living, um, that's, that's your kind of stereotypical residence. So we anticipate very similar um, in that facet. And as long as folks can meet the medical qualifications or we can, we can handle their medical needs, um, we look forward to them reside with us. Thank you. What's the primary agency that sort of oversee this operation? Other health issues, things of that nature. Who, who oversees the operation? So from a licensing perspective, um, Executive Office, Office of Elder Affairs licenses the community. Um, so they do, you know, annual or biannual inspections um, at, at the property level. And then we, we're hiring a, a um, very well-known management company, Charter Senior Living, um, will be managing the day-to-day -day operations of the community. They have multiple properties you know, throughout the United States. If this was granted, when do you expect that you would break ground on it? This year? It's, uh, so it'd be, it would be, uh, Site plan approval process would take what, three, four months. Yeah, so construction would be next year. Next construction season. Yes. Any other questions from the board? Other questions? Uh, 
going to be a five-story building. Is that, is that what it took for you? It's going to be five stories, and that's, and that's because you uh, were unable to uh, secure property from the landowners, land right? That's um, correct. Uh, <clears throat> What's the disadvantage to to uh, uh, being uh, multi multi stories as opposed to being a two or three story building uh, on, on a larger space? It 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 it's, it, it appeared it, it sounded as though you you say we wanted to be four but we had to go five because we couldn't get the so well, is there a dis is there a disadvantage to to being being five stories or, or six stories as opposed to being three? The question, I'm sorry, I, I lost it. Is, is there a disadvantage to, uh, uh, relative to um, the age age of people and, and accessibility to uh, entrance and egress to, uh, for a five-story building versus a three-story building? Okay. Uh, the question is, is there a disadvantage? Should we consider that a negative? Or? For the public record, my name is Mark Lankor. I'm the engineer of record working with uh, with our client. To your point is that it comes down to when you look at uh, actual cost of building construction and how one of the components of being able to bring this to a 30% le lower level so that it costs to, to the market has to deal also with the number of stories. And so by having the fifth story, we're actually able to pass that savings on to the client, which is important, especially in trying to meet the middle market demand. So that's one of the primary reasons for going to the fifth story. How many elevators in the building? Two. Okay, we're all set. Mrs. Smith, you with us? I'm right here. All right, just check it. Thank you. Who here wants to speak in favor? Mr. Chair, I have Ellen Ross, um, who's having, a shot, having trouble with muting herself. She's opposed, she's opposed. She believes it's way too big, no green space, and not enough power. This is Ellen Ross. We'll check your terms again slowly. Way too big, no green space, not enough parking. Seems to be interesting. Okay, I'm going to close. No, no. Yeah, I'm going to close that portion, Harry. Is there any uh, elected officials here that want to speak on this issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion, Harry. I'm going to open up the deliberations of the board. Board comments.
I think this is a it's, this is a, a great addition to the city of Brockton. I think with the, with the question of of size and it, it it really it sounds to me like the, by going to five stories, they need to do it for for volume to maintain their price point and their their business model. And that that seems pretty simple to me. Um, in that area, you already have Heights Crossing and uh, the the other facility up there in in Brockton Adult Daycare right around the corner so it's a, it's a it's an area that's attracting these type of facilities and, and a, a, a mid-market assisted living facility is what's it would, is what's needed now and will be needed even more in the future Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> Someday I'll learn how to run this. Uh, this originally was zoned for a conference center and it has evolved into what it has right now, which is uh, assisted living, nursing home, hotel, professional uh, location rather than a commercial location. There's offices, there's um, unique situations up there, but the health industry seems to have settled into that area. Um, I think this will be a, a good addition to that location. Uh, I know that there's been problems on that location with uh, some homeless people and things that have been going on out there that are not the best. Uh, hopefully this would uh, resolve that. I feel comfortable that the presentation that we heard tonight is from some professionals that have experience in doing this in other locations. And from what I've heard tonight, I feel comfortable that they will live up to what they're telling us. I also will comment on the presentation that was given to the board and all the documents that were given to the board prior to tonight's hearing is very, very helpful to eliminate a lot of questions the night of the hearing. So. Uh, the presentation was good and the preparation coming into tonight was also exceptional. Uh, anything else from the board? Do we want to make a uh, motion? Motion is granted. So we want to second that. Mr. Leanis, second it. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Just one moment, Mr. Chair. We have a problem with our vote member. Okay. We'll hold up on the vote for a second. He's um, still muted. Get her on the uh, voice and then uh, put on the uh, speakerphone. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll call yeah, she's going to call the role right now. Yes. Okay. All right. Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mr. Lanis. Yes. Mr. Pina. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Ms. Smith. What's your vote? What's your vote? I'll be glad when this COVID is done.
Please, do not hang up. What is your vote? Say it again. What is your vote? Yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, that's five and an affirmative, zero and a negative. We're keeping you on voice now. I don't know. Yes. Okay, the vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you. Yeah, let's probably just keep them on the phone. Okay, the next petition is 20-53, the petition of 127 Center Corner LLC, 362 Montella Street, Rockton, Mass. For a variance from section 2734, 2748, 2753, and 54, and 2755 to construct a mixed use complex with 40 residential rental units and commercial space without parking or loading area in an I 2 zone located at 127 Center Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the zoning board of appeals, with your permission, my name is. I am pleased to uh, represent uh, 127 Corner LLC. Uh, one uh, uh, corner LLC. A, a group of investors have, uh, have uh, taken an interest in, in, in the city of Rockland. Uh, they have committed to a development. And they have developed the quality uh, properties uh, within the city. Uh, they're experienced, uh, and they do what they say they're going to do. Uh, their uh, uh, commercial street property is right next door. We came before this board uh, approximately a year and a half, two years ago, uh, requesting a variance to be allowed to construct uh, apartments at uh, what used to be uh, uh, a, a a state office building. Uh, that construction after the uh, ribbon cutting uh, was completed is fully developed. Uh, and it in fact is housing exactly who they thought would be interested in the property. Uh, some retired, uh, some young, uh, a lot of transit uh, with uh, uh, the uh, uh, MBTA uh, in its close proximity. They uh, purchased as part of that first project the uh, glass uh, building, which uh, was a defunct business. Uh, and in doing so, uh, they improved their flow uh, of in and out on the uh, 27 Commercial Street property uh, by uh, allowing uh, a, a, a shared exit uh, to uh, Commercial Street uh, and also allowed them to have a clear line of parking, uh, which was problematic because of the uh, uh, the uh, property uh, boundary. So in this specific project, uh, it is their intention to construct a 40 unit residential complex. Again, it's gonna be totally market rate. There will be no affordable component. Uh, they are uh, already gone before the uh, city of Brockton and the city council uh, was gracious enough to grant uh, an HDIP application so that they will be going before the uh, state to try to secure some funds. But again, this will be solely directed towards market rate housing without any affordable component. The uh, intent is that they would have 25 one bedroom and 15 two bedroom units. There would be some commercial uh, use uh, in, in the ground floor uh, as yet to be undetermined, but uh, uh, Darren DeCoste, uh, who has uh, 
uh, been a leading force in this development, believes that there is uh, a market for a commercial mixed use in the first floor and wants to maintain that. The parking relief is being requested. Again, uh, this is a property that will have uh, some on-site parking as evidenced by the plan. But in addition, uh, we have uh, reached uh, agreement and in fact are, are right now leasing uh, uh, 25 permitted space from the MBTA uh, or bat bus garage that is roughly only approximately 100, uh, 150 feet away. So we have ample parking, even though uh, we were requesting relief. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the project uh, is, is, is roughly anticipated to be somewhere around seven to $10 million. Uh, it is going to bring uh, great development to the city. Uh, it is a clearly a, a, an example of the urban transportation parking and, uh, uh, and housing, uh, as was the commercial street property. Uh, and it is, in fact, uh, a project that we look uh, for your support. In addition to the uh, uh, parking relief and the variance for the use, uh, they're also seeking off-street loading relief pursuant to Section 25, 2755. I think that this is an exceptional uh, project. It's a project that's been endorsed by the City Council. It's a project that has been consistently supported by our city planner. And we think it's another improvement in uh, filling out the neighborhood in downtown Brockton with quality construction and quality units and making use of the, uh, uh, the train in the way it should be done. So I, I don't have any specific uh, uh, items more. I'd be happy to address any questions that you may have. Any questions from the board? Yes. Uh, Mr. Pino. What is the, what is the proposed uh, the, the rent for, for each of a one bedroom and a two bedroom? Uh, I, I, I do not know the answer to that question. And, and unfortunately, it's the cost uh, has to be out of state. We'll the answer, answer it in this, uh, uh, this way. The rents that they're getting next door are higher than they anticipated. Uh, they were marketing for. So not only is that project successful, it's more successful than they anticipated. Okay. What kind of an agreement do you have with that relative to this uh, I have, in fact, uh, an invoice now that, I can, now that I can share with you. But, uh, basically, uh, you're already renting. Uh, you're already uh, bat parking permits for spaces 195 through 219. 25 permits uh, at, uh, at the $90 a piece, uh, and uh, it's paid quarterly, and we have the availability of the space, and they're happy to have us. What about the space that you referenced? Are those for 75 commercial streets? No, uh, 75 commercial street. Uh, has more spaces than they need. Uh, we, we are not cross-utilizing any spaces. Uh, all the spaces that are dedicated to, to uh, 75 uh, Commercial Street go to 75 Commercial Street. All the spaces that we're identifying in our plan either are on-site or on-site plus the uh, spaces with the bat bus. Right, so it's a plan that showed that there was eight spaces for 75 Commercial Street. And I explained to them that was a lousy idea. Uh, so they picked it up by uh, going with the 25 spaces at the Bat Bus Garage. So we will not be using any 75 commercial street spaces in this ground, in this project. So, so to answer the question, so there is no confusion, we don't intend to utilize any space at the 75 commercial. Uh, see if I can get the plan, excuse me.
I do not have the plan here, sir. I apologize. We submitted floor plans uh, to to the uh, to the board, which would show the elevator space. What are you anticipating for parking places? What are you anticipating for parking places for the commercial on the first floor? Uh, in, 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 in this uh, situation, uh, they, there there is a loading space uh, that uh, is, uh, I believe it's called 15 minute parking or a drop off parking of uh, four spaces right in front of the building. Do you have any idea how many spaces are needed for that commercial location? In terms of uh, what the actual use requirement is, uh, uh, again, uh, I apologize, without the plan, I do not. Okay, I just was looking at the square footage of the commercial area and the first floor plan to check how much parking you would need for the front. Is it 5,000 square feet? There is going to be a tunnel, so to speak, on the right hand side at the first floor level that you would drive under in order to get to the back of the building. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So the, the actual building on the upper floors extends towards the tracks over this tunnel area that you go to. It does, sir. Yes. Okay. Any other questions for the board? Not we're going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Anybody on the screen? Nobody on the screen, Chair. We're going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? No one on the screen, Chair. Do we have somebody? No. <clears throat> Okay, I'm waiting for opposition. There's nobody coming up on the screen. That is correct. No one on the on the virtual. Okay. All right, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there any elected official that would like to speak? Council. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the zoning board. My name is Jeff Thompson. I'm the Ward Five City Councilor, uh, 127 Center Street. Uh, uh, it is uh, in my ward and is uh, in the heart of our downtown district. Uh, Brockton's been working on a, a downtown strategy uh, over the past 20 years. <clears throat> uh, well, th over the last five years, which is a 20 year plan, uh, we are seeking to add uh, residential units in our downtown uh, to take advantage of uh, the, our MBTA asset. Uh, we need a good mixture of um, affordable, home, uh, affordable housing and also market rent. Uh, this project is 100% uh, market rent and will fit nicely in our plan for downtown. As Attorney Burke says, uh, the City Council uh, does um, uh, approve of this project uh, as that we have uh, filed <clears throat> some requests for HDEP funding uh, for this project. Um, Mr. DeCoste has uh, shown himself to be a uh, proven developer in Brockton. Uh, 75 Commercial Street uh, project uh, was built uh, within budget and on time. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, view uh, that uh, housing project and uh, it's high quality, um, very nicely done. We expect no less of this project at 127 Center Street. Um, this is, I believe, an industrial zone. Uh, it's zoned as an industrial zone. Uh, the hardship is obvious. Uh, we, we, there is no call for industrial use uh, in this project that is abutted uh, by residential uses, our police department and the MBTA. So um, I believe that's an obvious hardship uh, that this um, board should uh, grant a variance for. There was a question as to parking. Um, 
We have very limited, limited parking downtown. I think the agreement that uh, Mr. DeCoste uh, came with the MBTA for uh, 25 spaces at their lot um, solves that problem. This is a housing project that our uh, city uh, greatly needs as to its uh, quality and, um, and location. So I'm asking uh, for a uh, favorable approval uh, of this project. And uh, thank you for your time tonight, gentlemen. Thank you. We have elected Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to open up the deliberations to the board. One minute. Mr. Chairman, I think as a uh, as a member of the planning board, I, this is this is projects like this have been on have been on the planning board's planning department's radar for for quite a while since the development of the downtown uh, action plan. And this, this is another key piece that fits right into that, uh, adding, adding market rate housing uh, right near the train station is a, a, a great benefit to the city. Mr. Peanut, motion to grant. Who, anybody want to make a motion to uh, second that? Second. Okay. Ms. Smith seconded. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded to grant. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Bernard. Yes. Mr. Lamas. Yes. Mr. Peanut. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Cameron Gallagher. No. Mr. Chairman, it's uh, four in the affirmative, one in the negative. Four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition is granted. Okay, now we're ready? We are ready. Next petition, 20-54, the petition of Partners Choice Properties, LLC, 18 Meadowbrook Drive, East Bridgewater, Mass, for a variance from section 2728, 
2710 subsection 2, 2748, and 2749. Special permit to subdivide existing parcel that includes an existing residential and commercial use in a C1 zone located 616 Center Street. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, my name is Jim Burke, attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street. I'm pleased to have Scott Farrier with me today who's going to assist. Scott's uh, spent a lot of time on this specific project. Essentially, uh, we have what is the old Bonnie Glen uh, on uh, Center Street. Uh, and, and by history, approximately 1916, uh, the residential uh, structure was built. Uh, of course, well before the zoning bylaw. Uh, and at some point, which is somewhat unclear, uh, a, a commercial structure was uh, 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 annexed on the same property that is now connected basically by a deck. Uh, the uh, assessor's office has it for, in fact, uh, a, a, a mixed use uh, uh, property uh, in a C1 zone. Uh, I, I have submitted two forms of relief, uh, whatever the uh, uh, board thinks is most appropriate, and I'll try to explain it because I think what you have is a non-conforming use. And uh, as part of a non-conforming use uh, under uh, 40A, uh, the, the usual course is to have 40A section six is to have a uh, zoning board of appeals determine that uh, any expansion in the use is uh, not uh, more of an impact on the surrounding uh, area, uh, and uh, they can impose certain conditions if they believe it's appropriate. The second is, is, is in fact, a variance uh, for relief uh, in this rather unique situation. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, plan that Scott has prepared is actually an a and plan. Uh, so uh, the a and plan was approved by the planning board, which basically you remove the, the deck and they're looking to have two separate parcels in the C1 zone. And because they're in a C1 zone, they have some sufficient area uh, and, and side lot uh, re re requirements. Uh, but the, uh, the, the difference is that you'll now have an impacted residential use that will become more non-conforming because it's smaller uh, than uh, was before when it was part of a combined parcel. So that, that's a rather unique uh, situation in terms of, of, of the development. Scott, do you want to identify that for him? Uh, sure. It's, uh, as Attorney Burke said, uh, there's a deck right in the middle of the, the two buildings, roughly it's about an eight by ten foot deck, uh, half on the commercial building, half on the residential property. Uh, we're looking to remove that entirely so there'll be no, uh, no encroachments that way. Uh, there's parking as it exists, uh, admittedly not the, the best situation, but parking right off of Center Street, enough parking for the uh, six spaces for the commercial spot, and then ample parking for, uh, for the residential building as well. Yes, please. So lot A is a conforming structure uh, in, in uh, a, a C1 zone, uh, but uh, where it abuts a residential zone, it generally requires 20 feet of setback, uh, and there exists 10.5. But again, towards the non-conforming use, the building has been there since 1916. And we are not expanding it in any way to impact on that uh, residential uh, zone. So an unusual situation, but we'd ask the board's consideration in granting relief. Okay, that's in the presentation. Okay, any questions from the board? So all we're doing is that 
All you're doing is removing a deck and making them two ones. Basically giving them the ability to giving them the ability to sell the one to the residential So there is a legal use here in 2010, and the determination it's a mixed use. Mixed use in a C1 zone, no expansion of residential use, single family only. The plan that I have in front of me is 1966, with a proposed addition of 70 by 25, which is the old aluminum place. So at the time, the house and this addition were used as one. So it's allowed a mixed use on that property on 10,000 square feet. So if this was to be continued used as it currently is, why do you need a special permit? Uh, again, I think, I think it, why would you need a special permit? Because we're making on the, the special permit, take it back, Barney Glenn, uh, as a form A, meets all the requirements of the zoning. Lot A, which is the house, because it, we had a combined parcel of, of X number of square feet, is now reduced by the land that we lost by the commercial structure being a separate parcel. So it becomes more non-conforming. That's the special permit. So you're saying that the Bonnie Glenn building becomes more non-conforming? No, Bonnie Glenn building is exactly, uh, meets the zoning requirements. The residential structure, because it once was on a lot that was larger, now will be on a lot that's smaller. And, and it becomes more non-conforming in terms of total use or square feet for the parcel. But if it's continued to use that as a single family house, yes, and one, one Glen property is considered to use as an office building, and it's granted mixed use with office building and single family house, why can't you continue to do that? You could, except uh, it's the intent of the, the developers uh, and, and owners to separate the two uh, so that you'd have one legal lot uh, in the C1, uh, the commercial, and then have a residential uh, structure uh, in, in two separate uh, forms of ownership. So we're not looking for special permits tonight. We're looking for fair. Well, uh, I, I, uh, I'll accept whatever the board will give us, uh, but I'm pointing out that this is a pretty unique situation because you could take the position that under 40A section six, you don't have to do anything with lot B. It's legitimate the way it is. But with lot A, uh, it becomes more non-conforming. And if you did, uh, uh, it would be uh, a special permit that you would grant. However, as I said in the alternative use, I can understand the boards moving to grant a variance because it's uh, more conventional. There needs for residential use in a commercial zone. So the problem here is this existing house would be on a lot of 3,600 square feet. That would be correct. And where is the parking for this? Uh, both in front, Mr. Chairman, and on the side, there's uh, a driveway on the where else is front. Uh, just to the left of the front door is. Uh, Two and those are existing. Right. That's what's used now. Is that the 17.2 feet? Yes. That's to the house. That doesn't even consider the steps on the bump off the front of the house. Right. The, the parking's on, on that side, to the side of the house. This parking area, not directly in front of the house or in front of the steps, but just to the left of that bump off. So, so you're saying it's between the house and Prince Street? Exactly. The front left corner of the house in Prince Street. And that's less than 17 feet? Right. Oh. 
and then the parking in the back off of Prince Street, behind the house, another set of stairs on the. And in the back, there is a right of way for Lot B. This came before us once before when the owner of the aluminum company stood before us and was very concerned about maintaining that right of way off of Prince Street to get access to his building. So obviously, if that's a right of way for Lot B, you can't park in that right of way. So the, the petitioner here doesn't want to use both buildings in conjunction with each other. That's the bottom line. That, that's correct. So the desire is to split this lot. Is this lot split now or is it all one lot? All one lot. It's all one lot. That's what I thought. Because we haven't recorded the ANR plan. Correct. So what you're showing us tonight is two separate lots, when in fact it's all one lot. And when they granted permission to build this building at 616 Center Street, the building that was to be built, which is now built, was to be used in conjunction with the house. The original plan shows that the two were going to be connected. Over the years, a porch of some type was built and the enclosure either was built or taken down, but it's not there now. Right, it's just a deck. So if this was granted, what's the, what's the separation between the commercial building and the proposed new lot line? Is that four feet? It's four feet from the commercial building to that lot line, uh, 5.2 feet from the residential building to that lot line. So there's only nine feet between the two buildings? Correct. So are we agreeing here that we're talking about granting a variance? We're talking about, uh, uh, I, I guess, granting a, a, a new variance. Uh, 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 because it stands now, uh, lot B doesn't require any relief under our zoning bylaw if we recorded the A&R plan. Correct, we need a variance to put that house on 3600 square foot lot. Or, uh, except, Except that in the, in the C1 zone, there is no minimum lot area. So it's a house. <laughs> it's a residential use, and that again, residential in a C1 zone. So it's. So you need, you need a variance to allow that single family house to be seen in a C1 zone. That's it. Exactly. So no matter what we do here, it's going to be a variance. A use for it. And then the side that set there. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Claire, just think it's very, it's very interesting when, we, when we're dealing with uh, dealing with issues that were created uh, 100 years ago. Right? Mm -hmm. with, Absolutely. Uh, construction of buildings and, uh, and very non conforming areas. I didn't hear that question. I just think it's, it's I think I'm not so muted. But uh, like, am I muted then? I can't kind of understand it. Where did he say? Okay. Speak up loud. <laughs> yeah, this is uh this is uh, just another another issue in the city. We have a lot of a lot of properties that were built a hundred years ago, and well well before zoning. And uh, I believe that uh, we just have to deal with these as they come along. Um, is there any other than other than separated properties for say for sale of, of the residential property? There's no other plans to do anything with it. No, there is not. There's really nothing else that could be done. Forgive me if I feel like I'm yelling. <laughs> Did you hear that? The problem is the delay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, this house is determined to be a single family house. Yes. Only. Yes. The board also 
12, sir. Okay, we heard you. <laughs> I'm going to open this up for uh, public discussion. Is there anyone here who wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion hearing. Is there anyone here who wants to speak in opposition? I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm going to open it up to discussion from the board. <laughs> as I've as I've mentioned before, um, we're 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 basically dealing handling the cards we've dealt here. Um, there's there's nothing. They're they're not asking to do anything additional to the property. They're just separating with the, the buildings. Um, I don't see that there's there's much much of a circumstance that we could be against this. Any other discussion? So on the, on the question of whether it's a special permit or a variance, uh, can I make a motion to grant the variance? I'm going to ask for a motion. And I think we should put a stipulation there that the house shall remain as a single family house. Correct. So moved. Who made the motion? Mr. Pina, who second? Second, no, second. Second is the motion. Motion's been made to second it to grant. Mr. Floyd, please call the roll. Mr. Bernard. Have we voted? Yes. I have a good, uh, so, excuse me, there has been a motion made to, to, to grant. There's been a motion made, made to grant and to be seconded, yes. And then it has been seconded. And yes. now you're asking you know, for the favor of the no. If you if you don't yes, you're in favor of the I, uh, I do not wish to have this vote. No. No? I can't hear what you said. Okay. Mr. Bernard, you're not. Mr. Lanis? Yes. Mr. Pina? Yes. Ms. Smith? No. Chairman Gallagher? No. Mr. Chair, it's two in the affirmative, three in the negative. Two in the affirmative, three in the negative. The petition is denied. All right, the next petition. One second, I just want to make sure Mr. Plodge is on. I'm on. Mr. Plodge, yes, I'm are you on. Are you on? Yeah. All right, we're going to call you Andrea for the night. Well, you, I've been called worse. All right, Mr. Bernard is going to recuse himself from this vote. Can you hear me now? Bernard, do you have to leave the room? Yeah, just have to step outside. You can step into the... Um... <laughs> None of us do. <laughs>
All right, Mr. Bernard is going to recuse himself from this case and acting in his stead is our alternate member, Bob Pelagi. Member Pelagi. Are you ready? Okay. The next petition is 20-55, the petition of New Heights Charter School of Brockton, 1690 Main Street, Brockton, Mass. For a variance for section 2753, subsection 3, 2754, to allow temporary tents and shelters required as a result of the COVID crisis in a C2 zone located at 1690 Main Street. Mr. Chairman, member of the Board of Appeals, Attorney Jim Burke again. A pleasure of representing New Heights. Uh, I was just before the board uh, and uh, was pleased that the board, uh, in its consideration, granted us uh, a, uh, a variance to allow uh, the parking determination uh, based on the model that the uh, board had set up uh, a couple of years ago. Just as we were in the process of uh, finishing that uh, variance, I got a call from uh, uh, Omar Mari Walker from New Heights indicating that he had just received the instructions from the Department of Education as to what the requirements were going to be for uh, school openings uh, for uh, 2020. Uh, and those uh, requirements included various uh, open areas uh, that required tents. Uh, it's the determination of the Department of Education that uh, fresh air uh, locations are required for students periodically during the day outside of the classroom. In addition, because of the distancing requirements, uh, they were uh, required to take up uh, just about every usable space. So the uh, teachers lost uh, officers, which resulted in uh, Holmgren's uh, uh, and, and, and Scott Barry's office drawing up proposals for temporary uh, tents and trailers to get them through this COVID crisis. So it was an emergency filing, and uh, go ahead, Scott, if you want to identify exactly what we're doing. Uh, so as Attorney Burke said, most of the site remains the same. Uh, just a, a few quick things to go over the tents that we're proposing. Excuse me. Yep. I'm sorry. The members are remote. I hear you. I should go this way. You can just leave the pads. Uh, thank you. So the uh, the two tents that we're proposing are up on the, the northern side of the property. So we have the two tents in that location. We eliminated a whole row of parking, uh, both up against that property line and the row closest to it uh, to accommodate the tents. We've also placed a row of Jersey barriers uh, up against those tents, uh, just to make sure there would be uh, no vehicular uh, mishaps at all in that location. Uh, in moving, in placing the tents in those locations and putting the Jersey barriers there, it's eliminated 26 parking spaces uh, from what you had previously approved last month. So that gets us down uh, below what was required. We had, I forget now, I'll grab my plan. We had a few extra spaces uh, last time. So this gets us down. Uh, the requirement was 269 spaces. This gets us down to 253. So it gets us 16 spaces below uh, what we've deemed to be required at the last Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, as Attorney Burke said, we've got three trailers proposed on the site, uh, two right on the side of the building where there's an existing loading dock, and then one uh, behind the building uh, kind of on the, I guess, the southwestern side of the property. And that one will be used for the teacher's room because they, they've lost their teacher's room. So there'll be a trailer for the teacher's room and then uh, two trailers for, uh, for additional classroom space. And also what I've highlighted in blue on this plan uh, is just the pedestrian walkway that we've placed on the plan just to get the kids safely uh, from the front of the building, out the door and over to the tent area. So, uh, as we've said in the past, I, I think we've always had plenty of parking. We've, we've come up with what we needed for zoning, but 
realistically, when you go out there, there's there's always plenty of parking out there. So at this point, under the current circumstances, we think we're doing about as best we can with it. That's we it, are, yes. So basically what you're asking for us tonight is to once again determine the appropriate number of parking places that are going to be needed for this configuration. Correct. Correct. Okay. Where is the end of it? You gave us a parking layout of 279 last time. Yes. Our figuring came out that you needed at least 269. Right. So you had some extra. Exactly. When we put all the numbers together, we come down to 253 spaces. That's correct. And we're eight spaces shot. I think the math is right, yes. It gets confusing, but I think we're right. Right. All right, so just as a comment, you need 269 by the formula that we used. Yes. You're now down at 253. Correct. And you're asking for a number of at least 253. Correct, yes. Right? Yes. So my thought is if we reduce it to a number somewhat below 253, to allow a little bit of wiggle room. But in the proposal that was put forth to us, they're looking for about 206 spaces because they're going to split up the students and they won't have all the students there at the same time. Okay. I'll just make a comment that I'm not comfortable lowering the number to that number because if we do, Anything can happen down there, down to that number. Sure. So I'm going to propose a number and a stipulation that this number that we come to tonight will only be valid in this school year for the 2021 season. At that point, it extinguishes itself and goes back to the 269. Is that what you're looking for? That would work, yes. Thank you, that would work. Okay. Board. Any questions asked? Okay. Uh, remote. Anybody got any questions? Mr. Smith. Good. And Mr. Pelagi. Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Good. Okay. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Okay. All right, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. And is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Okay. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing and I'm going to open up the deliberations for the board. I am going to make a suggestion and we can hash it around. But they need at least 253 on this request that's before us tonight. I'm going to make a suggestion that we lower that number at least five to six more spaces, which would get us down to about 247, 248. That gives them a little bit of wiggle room in case something comes up. I'll pull down the deliberation. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think that uh, that makes sense. Uh, we, we 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 know that uh, they, they you generally have plenty of parking down there, but we, we have a formula that we use uh, that has a, we have a required spaces. So I think I think that that number works fine, especially if it, it just extinguishes itself at the end of the 2021 year. I'm just concerned that if 
the regulations that they're working on now come uh, off saying jail and they could go back to 700 students and yet they only need 203 parking places. We've lost control of parking in that place. Mm -hmm. so that was the whole purpose of them coming before us because we were the ones who determined how the parking would be. In that, so at least this way here, we as a board can have control over the number of spaces and yet allow them to have some wiggle room in that part. So that's where I came from. So I'm looking at the number 247. That works. It works. All right. I would propose then that we allow them not less than 247 on site packing places as an amendment to the original 269. And this amended number that we will come to an agreement on will only be valid during the 2021 school year. At the end of the 21 school year, it reverts back to 269. Correct. All right, somebody want to make that motion? I'll make a motion to grant. So one more will never show the other one in the second. Yes. Second. Three is the second. Okay. So the motion has been made in second to grant a temporary reprieve for 247 packing spaces until the end of the 2021 school year, at which time we'll go back to the 269. Just one piece for the Mr. Pavadi? Yes. Mr. Raines? Yes. Mr. Pina? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Chairman Gallagher? Yes. The chair is five affirmative, zero negative. Five in the affirmative, none in the negative is granted. Thank, Thank you, Board Bridgetown. Good night.